Let us pray. Gracious God, on this day, this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, may these words that we've just heard and the words that, that, that I am about to speak help us all prepare for the coming of Christ each day and especially on Easter. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> October 28th, 18, 1886. On that date, an impromptu, an unplanned parade, it broke out in lower Manhattan on Broadway, and it happened right after the unveiling of the Statue of Liberty. And in that way began, and in that way began an American tradition, what became known as the ticker tape parade, in an area that became known as the Canyon of Heroes. About 15 or 20 years ago, I was, when I worked on Wall Street, I was walking, I'm not sure exactly why, but I was walking up um, the Canyon of Heroes. I was walking up the most southern part of, of um, Broadway, the Canyon of Heroes. And I was on my, probably on my way back to the office from a meeting, and I was walking with my head down, which is the way I do it. It's just the way I walk. And I started noticing, as my head down, some plaques on the, in the sidewalk that were, what I quickly learned is that they were commemorating in chronological order honorees from a, like a, from over a century of these parades in the Canyon of Heroes. And there was a plaque for every single one of them, 206 parades. And while, after a while, I noticed a pattern. Beginning in 1919, so into the 20s, right at the end of World War I, we started to have a lot of parades. We averaged about three a year for about the next 50 years. Three a year for the next 50 years with honorees from every different, not every different, but many different parts and walks of life. War heroes and astronauts and explorers and sports heroes and, and, and leaders from other nations as well. But for some reason, beginning in the 1970s, the pace started to slow. There were the spacing between those plaques started to get wider and wider. And it, 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 the pace slowed to the point where we now, in the two, from 2010 to 2020, three, we had three ticker tape parades. And 2000 to 2010, three, six in this century so far. And so friends, to me a question to ask is, where have all the heroes gone? Where have all the heroes gone? It seems to me, maybe this is a partial answer, it seems to me that we live in a time where we can't agree on who's a hero and who deserves a parade. Maybe this one's too much of this, or this one's too much of that. And so, sure, well, let's lift up our athletes. That's safe. But this person or that person, they're going to offend someone. It just seems that, and, and this, I think, is a reflection of it, it seems that we don't hold each other in very high esteem. Maybe because we know they're likely to falter, putting the parade at risk, at least in hindsight. And what's worse than a fallen hero? Today we celebrate a parade that at first seemed like it was for a triumphant hero. Talking, of course, about Jesus' parade as he came into the city of Jerusalem, Jerusalem for Passover week. The disciples, along with the crowds, they gathered 
And they cheered him. They feted him. They treated him like a king, a hero who had come to save them. Literally. The word they were shouting from Psalm 118, Hosanna, it literally means save us, we beseech you. But it also likely took on meaning, more general meaning of praise. Save us, though. And they threw branches and they threw their cloaks on the road as he rode into town. Another a classic old ancient way of honoring kings. And they were all the while, they were still quoting the Psalm 118, same psalm that we had earlier, the same psalm from which Hosanna come from. They were saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. These people, they had great expectations for this Jesus who they were feting. His reputation, it preceded him, not only the healings, but how he took on the religious powers that be and in the bold things that he said and he did. Expectations were high. This gathered crowd has had become very much like the, the messianic, the way of, ways of thinking of the day. They no doubt expected a Messiah in the mold of King David to come and save them, to save them from the hated Romans returning Jerusalem to its rightful glory. After all, it was Passover week, and it wasn't Passover, the celebration of the Israelites getting out from under the yoke of another hated oppressor, the, the Egyptians. The crowds were charged up because a long-awaited Messiah, the Anointed One, was finally coming. And yet, to the astute eye, there was something off about this parade. And you might have expected the disciples to have figured this out. Because Jesus had tried to tell them three different times that he was going to be killed and that he would rise again. But every time he did it, they basically changed the conversation. And so the disciples were cheering along with everyone. Now, of course, we, all of us, we know something that the crowd didn't know. We know where this parade is headed. We know that it's headed to the cross. Five days later, he'd be killed, and he'd be killed like a common criminal, which is what people on the cross were killed for, killed by the very people he had come to save the Israelites from. And what's worse was that what's worse than a fallen hero? A hero who doesn't deliver on expectations. And so it's no surprise the crowds turn against him. But Jesus, he actually anticipated this. He anticipated the misplaced expectations of the crowds. In fact, he tried to signal something to them by carefully, that's what all that, the, 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 the words he's talking about at the beginning of the reading, he was carefully planning how he would come into town and he would do so on a donkey. He tried to, and, and, and a donkey is opposed, by the way, to a stallion. What he was signaling to them, which is very much picking up on the great Israelite prophet from 500 years before, Zechariah. He was, he was lifting up. He's basically saying to them, yes, I'm a king. Yes, I'm a Messiah. I am your Savior, but I'm not the kind of Savior you think I am. You see, kings and governors and leaders who came into Jerusalem or any city, and they came on a stallion like Pontius Pilate did every time he came to town. That was actually meant to be a menacing sign, which basically signaled, you'd better listen to me or else. But kings who came on a donkey, they were coming in peace. But the crowd did not get that. And so they shout, basically saying, thank God you're finally here. We've been waiting so long for this. 
the coming kingdom of our ancestor, David. You know, David, the great warrior king. And what's worse than a disappointing hero? Five days later, that same crowd was shouting, crucify him, crucify him. The Palm Sunday Parade, it points out an amazing irony. The irony between the kind of king, the kind of Messiah that was expected, and the kind of Messiah that they and we get. Dashed expectations are a dangerous game. No wonder we don't have many parades. No wonder we don't have many heroes. Who knows? They just might fall off their horses. Better yet, I think we all know they will fall off their horses because we all do. Friends, we live in a time, I believe this, where we don't give each other much latitude. We live in a time where one mess up can end up on YouTube in a career can be over. Or someone maybe says the wrong thing and the pitchforks come out. I'm not sure I can easily explain how we got here, and I think we all have ideas and maybe our own explanations, but what I can do, what I can do is recommend a way, a wonderful way to get out of this mess. And that is by paying attention to the one up on that donkey the one who was so misunderstood. In an act of unequaled grace, Jesus came in peace, not brandishing threats and menace, but love. He talked repeatedly about love, Jesus did in his life, about love and peace. And he talked about how we need to give each other a little bit more Space and treat each other with more grace. To stop being so hard, maybe we could say. To stop being so hard on each other by saying things like, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And saying things like, turn the other cheek. Or not to hate our enemies, but to, well, amazingly, to find love for them. And to forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven times and love our neighbors, and he said that without adding, oh, except for them over there. And he said, judge not lest ye be judged, and he said many other things that pointed us in this direction. And then he lived it out. One way to characterize Christ's ministry, his life, death, and resurrection, is that he came to calm us down which doesn't mean we won't disagree, and sometimes aggressively Jesus himself disagreed with others, sometimes aggressively. But maybe it also means that we try to assume some goodwill in each other, maybe especially the person we disagree with most, and maybe give second chances when something has has been done that really is a problem. And even in all of those positive things, even if we don't give everybody a parade, And all of that, knowing full well that none of us have things perfectly wired and that we are all sinners in need of God's grace. And in that way, and there we might find, we might rediscover how to converse with each other again, to do it without finger pointing. Christ came in peace, Christ came on a donkey. And in the greatest act ever of love and grace and peace, he did something he did not have to do. And he did it so that we might be forgiven and so that we might learn to forgive. He agreed to go up on that cross, an act of love and grace and peace meant to be contagious, passed on from 
him to us and from us to each other. Jesus, at that parade, was up on that donkey, and in doing so, he, and in that moment, he personally understood how hard we can be on each other. He was up on that donkey and up on that cross and in everything else he did because he knew how hard we can be on each other. And he was doing it to show us that we don't have to be. Amen.